Welcome to the Accelerate Church television broadcast. We are so glad that you have tuned in today. Pastor Jeremy is teaching on the imminent return of Jesus. Such a powerful message preparing people for the return of Jesus in today's time. We believe that you will be strengthened, encouraged, maybe even challenged by today's message. Let's open our Bibles together and head into the sanctuary with Pastor Jeremy right now. We're going to lay our eyes on what the Bible says about Jesus coming back. Are you ready? How many are hungry this morning? Not for a cheeseburger, for the Lord. How many are thirsty, not for a coat, but for more of his spirit? Amen. My prayer is that you'll be filled. Praise the Lord. Go to Acts chapter 1 and say it loud. Thank God for the word. word. Acts chapter 1 and verse 9 says, Now, when Jesus had spoken these things, which, by the way, was telling his disciples and followers to go be filled with the Holy Spirit. They watched. He was taken up. Somebody say rapture. rapture. And a cloud received him out of their sight. And verse 10, Acts 1 says, While they looked steadfastly toward heaven, as he went up, behold, two men stood by them in white apparel. Those are two angels. So get this. They are looking up, watching the master get raptured to heaven to go sit at the right hand of God. And while they're gazing up, the Bible says, steadfastly looking, two angels appear. I I like to, in my mind, I have that picture like they're like, hello. And they're like, whoa, where did they come from? You know, maybe it didn't happen just like that, but that's the way I see it. And here they are, two angels. Now, God doesn't open your eyes to angels every day. But if he does, he's trying to get something across to you. Somebody asked me, and this is a good thing for me to touch right here, how come you don't see, and we don't see as the church, the manifestation of angels to the degree they did back at the beginning of the church? Well, it's because we know more now than they knew then. Revelation knowledge is progressive. You see, they did not know there was going to be a 2,000 years, two-day period Of the church age. The Old Testament prophets hadn't prophesied it. So this day, the master had been risen from the grave 40 days previous to this. So they had been hanging out with him for, uh, you know, depending on what scholar you read after, 30 plus days they'd been around Jesus after the resurrection. That's something else, isn't it? He walked this planet that many days after he rose from the dead. And... (laughs) Here he is now getting caught up, raptured up, and they're watching. Now everything in their life was wrapped up in Jesus, and there he goes. Now, this should not have shocked them, because they'd already heard him say in John chapter 14, John chapter 15, John chapter 16, it's recorded, that the Holy Spirit's going to come when I go away. Now, they didn't make sense to him at the time, but this is what I'm talking about. I'm not hating on the book of Acts. I'm simply saying this. We now have more revelation knowledge as time has passed, and we spent more time in the Word, more time studying this thing. You can see things more clearly than they could that day. Why? Well, we see there's been a church age. They didn't even understand necessarily when Jesus said, I'm building my church and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. They're like, great. You're calling out people and you're building a church. That's great. They didn't know what that meant. There were still temples there. So that's what I mean. We now know, oh, there was a church age that God had planned for man. So that all people, red, yellow, black, and white, that are all precious in his sight, could be called out for such a time as this and make it to the kingdom of heaven. Hey, I feel the Holy Ghost on that. Well, There they are watching everything they've given their life up for. There he goes. So two angels show up. This is a big deal. And in verse 11, they said, men of Galilee, (laughs) why do you stand gazing up to heaven? And I'm sure they wanted to say, because the master just went up. I mean, that's what I would have wanted to say. I know Peter had that on the edge of his tongue. I know, because Peter always would speak like that. But before they could say anything, they said, the same Jesus 
who was taken up from you into heaven will so come in like manner as you saw him go into heaven. Glory to the same Jesus that you just saw raptured is coming back. Woo! Now, if you study your Bible, you'll find out they went straight from the Mount of Olives where they were standing right at that moment to the upper room because Jesus told them to go and wait. So they obeyed. 120 did. Though He appeared to over 500 people. You know, if they'd have been smart, they'd have realized there is nothing going on more important than meeting with Jesus. But then... I say we're smarter. 2,000 years have come and gone. We're 2023, and yet people find all kinds of reasons not to gather and assemble, though the day is much closer of his return than it was that day. And people have all kinds of reasons not to gather now. They're falling asleep at the will. Why is it Jesus in resurrected form? Literally, they could see the nail print in the hands. They could see that. The man that died on the cross when the earth turned black, when an earthquake hit, they, this was not a small thing. There he was alive, and they had too much going on to be meeting with him the day he was raptured. What were they doing? Same thing Americans do now. A bunch of nothing. Eternally speaking, it amounts to Nothing. You can stay up to date with everything happening at Accelerate Church by downloading our app. Add events directly to your calendar, receive notifications when services are going live, hear previous sermons preached by Pastor Jeremy, and you can even give right there from your mobile device. The Accelerate Church app has everything you need right there in the palm of your hand. Head over to your app store today and type in Accelerate Church Amarillo to download to your mobile device. The same Jesus that Peter was crucified upside down for, that John was boiled in oil for, that all those people that stood there that day were martyred for, is coming back. That's what they said. So from the very, very beginning of the church age, the very foundational apostles of the church had on their mind, he's coming back. He's coming back. Now, again, this was 40 days after the resurrection. Most scholars say it was in 32 A.D. Some say it was 33 A.D. We're not going to argue. Let's say it was 32 or 33 A.D. Okay? It was before Pentecost. We're just right before it. Where the Holy Spirit... First fell on the disciples of Jesus, as you know, if you keep reading Acts chapter 2, you see. And on the day of Pentecost, the time of fully come, you know, the Holy Spirit came. Remember the, that story, right? Well, <laughs> from that time in 32 or 33 A.D., some time passed and a lot happened. And a lot of this is recorded in the book of Acts. And Acts is kind of a broad book in this sense. It covers a long time period. So when we read it, we just go from one chapter to the next to the next. But that doesn't mean that, like it was happening the next day, unless it says in there the next day. Are you following me? There's some time that went by, but thank God we have the book of Acts recording a lot of very interesting things that happened. I mean, you start out in, in reading in Acts, and you'll find um, here in chapter 7 that there was a man named Stephen. Some of them call him Stephen. I've always called him Stephen, who was stoned. He was a waiter. He was in the ministry of helps. So just so you know this and you're clear, if you serve God the way he's supposed to be served, full of the Holy Ghost and fire, on fire for God, it ain't just pastors going to take persecution. <laughs> you may just be serving a table at a helps conference. Next thing you know, people picking up stones and stoning you. And the Bible records a man by the name of Saul held the coats. In other words, he was encouraging. Let me help you stone this Christian. But in the book of Acts, you also find that same man turned into Paul, and it wasn't overnight. Sadly, many Christians think that God's a microwave God. He's not. It was quite a process, actually. The church wouldn't even listen to the guy. And why would you? He had been responsible for killing Christians. Yet by the end of the book of Acts, he's over there preaching to Felix. 
Drusilla. Knees knocking. Talking about judgment and repentance. Something happened. The boy changed. But it wasn't a one-year situation. It was this period of time. That's what I'm telling you. Some time passed. Well, you fast forward from 32 A.D., and you go to 54 A.D., 21, 22 years have passed now after the two angels had appeared and told the disciples Jesus is coming back. And guess what? Those 21, 22 years ticked by, he still hadn't come back. So there was some concern, and some Christians started getting nervous. Now, in this sense, nothing has changed except 2,000 more years have ticked by, and people are still nervous in the service when you talk about Jesus coming back. In fact, some people are like, oh, that's a scary message. L- let me just say this. The message of Jesus coming back is not scary. It's serious, but don't confuse the two. So 54 AD comes, and the very first letter that the Apostle Paul writes is to the Thessalonica church. Okay, It's not laid out in in, in our New Testament in this order that he wrote. Uh, Some people say 14 books, for sure 13 he wrote. Um, The Holy Spirit used him as a secretary that was inspired by the Holy Spirit, right? So Paul wrote those, these different books, but it wasn't in the order that you see laid out in your Bible. First Thessalonians was the first chronological book that Paul wrote inspired by the Holy Spirit. And it, this is why immediately the Holy Spirit starts bringing up the coming of Jesus. I'll show you. Go to 1 Thessalonians chapter 1. Remember the verses and the chapters were added later, so it was all one letter But for our reference, it makes it easy. And in chapter 1, he brings it up. Let's read verse 8. One of my favorite verses in the Bible. It says, for from you, the Thessalonica church. I'll just go ahead and say the church in Amarillo at Accelerate. The word of the Lord has sounded forth. Not only in Macedonia and Achaia, but also in every place. And when you study this sounded forth, it's basically like it's being yelled and amplified and echoing throughout the, the whole region. That's what I love about our sister ministry, Kingdom Keys, and being on radio even live right now. You have no idea who's listening, and neither do I. But I believe if you're listening right now, God's designed you to listen. you got 10 minutes left, and then you got to go to AccelerateChurch.cc to hear the rest of this message, because I can't wrap it up in 10 minutes, though I'm going to try. But as I'm broadcasting right now, there's no way to know who all is listening. It penetrates walls of buildings. There's guys that are behind bars that listen. And the harvest is white, ready. We're coming. (laughs) But the word of the Lord has sounded forth. Look what he says in the latter part of the verse, 1 Thessalonians 1, verse 8. Your faith toward God has gone out so that we do not need to say anything. Verse 9. For they themselves declare. In other words, the world says. They can tell. Because the word is all you talk about now. Let me update that. It's all you post about now. What's wrong with you? You used to be so friendly online. Now all you do is post a word. You're too serious. It's not a bad thing. They themselves declare concerning us what manner of entry we had to you and how you turned to God from idols to serve the living and true God. There's only one living and true God. There's only one. His name's Jehovah, God Almighty, Jesus, His Son, and the Holy Spirit. Glory to God. Verse 10, and to wait. And to what? Wait, 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 wait. This church is known because God's word sounds forth from them. They can tell they've had a change. They turned from idols. They reached a turning point. Now they're serving the one true living God. And they're waiting for His Son From heaven. What is that? Waiting on him to come back. So see, it spread from the day they watched Jesus to now there's a church established in Thessalonica 21, 22 years later here. Though Jesus hadn't come back, they were looking, waiting for his son from heaven. That's an active position, not a passive position. Accelerate Church places a high priority on instilling God's Word into the heart of the next generation. 
Our kids ministry is spreading hope by teaching the Word of God on a level that young ones will understand and take home with them. In Accelerate Kids, your kid will experience awesome praise and worship, illustrated sermons from God's Word, and interactive games in both big and small groups. Serving God is fun, and we would love for your kids to join us at Accelerate. If you get into man worship and following man, more than the word, you're going to stop looking for his return. Because there'll be a man somewhere that'll tell you, he's not coming. But listen, my friend, the king is coming. And he's coming quickly. Yeah. Well, chapter 2 of 1 Thessalonians. Remember, this is the first book written chronologically. After that day, some 22 decades had passed, right? 21, 22 years had passed. And the Holy Spirit says, okay, first chapter, I'm telling you, he's coming. 1 Thessalonians chapter 2, I like this. Paul covers a whole lot of different things inspired by the Holy Spirit. And he says, for what is our hope? What is our joy or our crown of rejoicing? Is it not even you in the presence of our Lord Jesus Christ? When? At his coming? Wow. So on the forefront of the minds of the Thessalonica church were the words sounding forth once again. You see Paul saying this. The entire point of our ministry is not who has the coolest building, not who has the most amazing technology available. Though I love our technology and I love our building. It's not about that. What's it about? You making it into the presence of Jesus and his coming. That's what ministry's all about. Somebody said, Pastor, aren't you concerned about what people are saying about you? No, I'm too concerned about getting people ready for the return of Jesus. And let me tell you, it's imminent. It's coming any minute. Somebody said, you're crazy. No, you're crazy. To get lazy and lay on your laurels and not get busy about the Father's business. You think Accelerate North doesn't come without some work? By the way, you need to come tonight because you got to look at that with the new carpet in it. Man, it looks amazing. It's really cool to see what God's already done. And the reason we're already able to go and do this is because of all of you that came out to the work day. Yeah. So we were off, you know, and I took my family on a little quick trip this week down to the Dallas-Fort Worth area, and I couldn't wait to get back to the promised land of Amarillo. Even though they had the land flowing with rain down there, I said, I call that back to Amarillo in Jesus' name. <laughs> but I love God's will. Somebody said, oh, yeah, you need to start in that north, huh? Mm. Hey, get off the boat, son. I ain't got time for you. You're going to sink us, Jonah. There's souls on the line. Well, don't you know what people are saying? What, you got time for that? The imminent return of Jesus is here. And you're concerned about what people say. You think the, the virgins that had their lamps lit were worried about what people had to say? The master's coming. What are you doing? Well, I, don't, I, don't, I don't, it hurt my feelings. I'm sorry, but this ain't the time to give into a hurt feeling. <laughs> this is like the worst time. You imagine, I, was, I watched those final four games yesterday, and that one was pretty exciting with that, uh, that two-pointer made right at the buzzer. I don't know if you saw it. It was pretty cool. It's pretty neat to see, and they're all excited. But can you imagine San Diego State? They're like, well, we're down by a point. I guess this is when I'm going to give up. Why? Well, that other team elbowed me in the ribs, so I quit. <laughs> they talked trash on me. Their other coach was yelling. It hurt my feelings for them. <laughs> Not to mention my coach jumping up and down and waving his arms at me while I'm standing there picking my nose, looking into the crowd. Do you think somebody makes it to the finals by being an ignoramus in the last seconds of the game? No, they're giving it their all, aren't they? They're giving it every ounce of energy, though they're dripping with sweat, though it's a lot of work and hours and hours and hours and hours are spent with nobody watching at practice. 
Sounds like Christianity. Hours and hours spent seeking the Lord, praying, studying his word. Nobody's there cheering you on but the Holy Ghost. And I, that's all you really need. <laughs> but the point is, people are, yeah, well, nobody's there cheering me on. I'm feeling kind of down and out. Well, I feel down and out. So what? I felt down and out this morning, but I'm here. I really didn't feel down. I just tell my feelings, shut up. I ain't got time for that. Dogs are barking. They're hungry again. The cat's running around like a wild cat. My cat, we got a cat. My wife talked me in. Actually, she didn't talk me into it. I was on one of my trips. and <laughs> I came back. Surprise, we got the kids. A kitty. What's the kitty's name? Kitty. Well, that's easy to remember. Kitty. Oh, she's so sweet. She'll crawl up in your lap and just purr and purr and purr. But at night, you go to sleep. And just when I get good and asleep, this particular cat named Kitty, Lou. I forgot the Lou part. My kids will correct me later. It's Kitty Lou. I will be asleep, and whatever ear is up in the air gets bit. She comes out of nowhere. I'm just going to sleep good, and all of a sudden, if you've ever had your ear pierced, I never have, but I can imagine what it feels like. You know Pastor ain't going to show up with an earring, but I can tell you this, if there's a hole in my ear, you know it's the kitty. <laughs> She literally bites me like every night when I go to sleep. I don't know what the deal is. And it's like, this is not a pig ear, okay? Anyway, got off track a little bit there. Just wanted to get that off my chest. <laughs> How did I go there? I don't know, and I don't care. Let's just leave it in the past. Here's what I do know. The whole point of why we have this ministry is so that you're ready. That's all that makes me tick, is are you ready? I know it better than I know my own name. The king is coming. This church's name, Accelerate, we're an end-time remnant church. How many times have you heard that? A lot. Why? Because that is at the forefront of every single message I bring. This is the eighth series on end times I've preached the last six years. That shows you how much... I am tracking with this. Jesus is coming. Now I have heard seven prominent ministers. It grows every week. But they're talking about Jesus is coming. And they're talking about it is so soon. And the Holy Spirit woke me up at 4.33 in the morning this past week. I don't remember what day it was because my week was all off kilter. Could have been Tuesday. Could have been Wednesday. Could have been Thursday. I don't know. But one of those mornings I woke up at 433, and I couldn't write fast enough. And I said, that's it. I'm coming back. I'm preaching this to you because it's all in the Bible. Jesus is coming. So we see. The angel said it. So from the get-go, two decades passed by. First chronological book, Paul writes, what happens? Jesus is coming, first chapter. Second chapter, what's happening? Jesus is coming. Third chapter, 1 Thessalonians 3, says, verse 11, Now may our God and Father himself and our Lord Jesus Christ direct our way to you. And may the Lord make you increase and abound in love to one another and to all just as we do to you. And verse 12 says... Oops, did I skip it? And may the Lord make you increase and abound in love to one another and to all just as we do to you so that he may establish your hearts blameless in holiness before our God and Father at the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ with all his saints. Now, so far, it's three for three. Every chapter of the first chronological book Paul is bringing up Jesus is coming back. Well, that brings us to chapter 4, which happens to be one of my favorites that you've heard a lot if you've been coming here for any time. Why? Well, I referred to it dozens and dozens of times, and that's not an exaggeration, over the last 10 years. 
I mean, probably four or five dozen times I have referred to 1 Thessalonians chapter 4. The reason for this is because he goes into detail, the Holy Spirit does, through his secretary Paul, to the Thessalonica church, to the church of Amarillo, to tell us in detail what is going to happen. And these verses in chapter 4, these take a little bit of a turn because this establishes New Testament doctrine. Let me show you what I'm talking about. Just say it one more time. Thank God for the Word. First Thessalonians 4.13, but I do not want you to be ignorant, brethren. Anytime the Bible says don't be ignorant, brethren, there's a lot of Christians ignorant on this exact subject. What should I not be ignorant about? Those who have fallen asleep or died in Christ. Lest you sorrow as others who have no hope. See, I, I, listen. Listen to me very carefully. It is always tough on this side of heaven when you lose a loved one. I hate it. I've lost a lot of loved ones that I love. But I refuse, and I've had to tell myself this before, I will not sorrow as those with no hope. Because though it gets rough sometimes, and sometimes you navigate that, listen to me carefully, don't give yourself over and yield to that sorrow. If they were Christians, and you're a Christian, you do not need to act like it was a final goodbye. It wasn't your last goodbye. You're going to see them again. Now, it may be sad. I've said it's been that way before. If I've had to tell my family I'm going on a short trip, I love you. That's sad. I'm going to kiss you all. I love you. Bye-bye. But I'm coming back. It's different if I say goodbye for the last time. You see, you see that? Well, what happens? If you lose a loved one to death and they were serving Jesus, and I've got quite a few that way. I've got grandparents on both sides of my family. I've got cousins. I've got friends. People I grew up with, they died in Christ. They died too early. It wasn't God's will, but they died. They went to heaven. Thank God for that. Well, that don't mean I want to go to heaven today unless Jesus blows the trumpet, the angels blow the trumpet, and I go up, all right? That's the only way. As he's with long life, he satisfies me. <laughs> Amen. You should want to live a long life and shine your light bright so you can affect more and more people. Well, thanks again so much for tuning in with us to today's broadcast on the imminent return of Jesus. While that does conclude today's message, that does not conclude this message in its entirety. And if you would like to hear more, head over to AccelerateChurch.cc and click on the media tab. There you will find the rest of this series as well as other series preached by Pastor Jeremy. Or if you were in the Amarillo area, we would love to meet you in person. We're located at 4400 South Crockett Street here in Amarillo. Our service times are Sunday morning at 10 a.m. and Wednesday evening at 7 p.m. If you're not in the area, we would still love to hear from you. You can write us at info at accelerate.church.cc. We would love to hear from you, pray with you, encourage you. You can even give us a call right here at 806 418 8913. We can't wait to hear from you and see you on the next television broadcast.